Hello, welcome to another edition of the Small Caps Podcast. I'm Peter Capsanis. It's great to have your company, and it's also great to have the company of Jeff Lucas, CEO and MD of National Real Estate Company, The Agency. Jeff, good to have you back again. Terrific to be back again, Peter. Thanks for having me. Now, look, the company's been in the news in the past week on the back of its half yearly results. Before we run through those, can you just give us a quick recap of what the agency is and what is its why? It's not every day that a real estate company runs on the ASX. Yeah, thanks. Look, we think we're a little bit different. Um, we, we've got a contemporary model that we operate. The Australian real estate sector is, uh, is, is quite a staid industry. It's been around for a long time. And the structure really hasn't changed in, in, in many, many decades. It's dominated by large franchise groups. It's enormously fragmented. A whole lot of little businesses and little franchise owners doing that business. So we're a different business. We're, we're a direct model, as we like to say. We're, you know, we're, we're a relatively large aggregated group where the company contracts directly with the real estate agents. So there's no interposed ownership entity between the company and the real estate agent. We think that's attractive for the agents because they get direct access to the leadership of the company and there's no dilution of messaging, et cetera, no dilution of brand. But importantly, also, we don't believe in the concept of the old concept of a real estate office, bricks and mortars on every bricks and mortar on every street corner. We like to think that we have um, what we call hubs, but we do have hubs around the country where they're large, functionally appropriate offices, where our people, our agents can come to collaborate, but most importantly, then disseminate out into their marketplaces. Because largely, as I've said before, the, uh, the customers aren't coming into the office, they're transacting here digitally. Um, important for people to collaborate, as we've seen post COVID, um, where people are really keen to get back into office environments. Um, and, and collaborate together about their respective markets and activities. So that's how we differ. Um, the reason why we're listed, we like to have access to the capital markets. We think because the industry is highly fragmented, there's a consolidation opportunity. Um, and obviously having access to capital markets is important for that. Um, we're currently assessing a number of, uh, a number of potential acquisitions um, for which we have the, uh, the current capability with our balance sheet to undertake that activity. All right, well, speaking of balance sheet, let's look at those uh, half yearly results. Uh, 2.14 million for the half year, earnings before interest. Uh, total revenue up 21% to 35.6 million. Gross commission income up 39% to 52.9 million for the half year. Value of property sold, Jeff, 3.1 billion uh, as a result of 3,000 properties transacted and still 3,500 properties still on your books or under management with an asset value of $3 billion. Are you happy with those N numbers? Yeah, look, um, it's fairly strong growth, Peter. Um, now, to be fair, the market has grown as well. The market has grown in terms of transaction volume. And also, as we all know, and as per people that are trying to buy a property also know painfully, the prices have been going up um, at almost unprecedented rates in the last 12 months. So, yes, it's been a rising tide. We score ourselves on how we compete against the market growth. Mm. Pleasingly, we are growing at a more rapid rate than the market in the markets in which we operate. $3.1 billion in sales, I guess, for a half year, you double that and you're about six, six and a half billion in sales. That's a reasonable scale of transaction, but there's much more in the marketplace. We're about 1% uh, only of the, uh, of the highly fragmented market. So yes, to answer your question, we are pleased with the rate of growth, strong rates of growth, and we don't want to grow too fast, um, too, too early, but um, there's a lot of growth to come and we're quite confident about our ability to want uh, to penetrate that market. Though that booming market, the housing market, uh, so has that been the major catalyst for your figures? I mean, and as you mentioned that, you know, you blow it out to uh, the full year, you've got, you know, six, six and a half billion dollars, uh, you know, of value uh, sold. So how else do you leverage this booming market? I mean, you forecast that there'll be, I think, moderate growth this year. You, you, you forecast out a few weeks back that this year there'll be, I think, nationally, there'll be, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, three to four percent growth. Yeah, we're saying that there's now bearing in mind that we'll bump around in different respective markets, but we believe somewhere in the vicinity of four to six percent 
Now, in some markets at the moment, you're seeing rates of growth stronger than that. However, importantly, in probably the largest market, certainly the largest market we currently operate in, which is New South Wales and Sydney predominantly, uh, that has just gone backwards for the first month in about two and a half, almost three years. So we dropped about 0.1 of a percent in the last month. That's a healthy thing, as anybody out there that's a first home buyer uh, or an upgrader will appreciate. And so we are seeing a cooling, and, and that's associated with, uh, I guess, the, um, the spectre of potential interest rate increases and the media associated with that. Um, there's a little bit of geopolitical um, influence there as well, concern in consumers' minds. But there's also increased stock or supply of houses that are coming to that is coming to market, and obviously supply and demand that that weighs down on price growth. We can't see a repeat of the mid twenty percent growth rates of the last twelve months. We won't see that, and so we therefore think it'll be circa four to six for this year, and it'll bounce around throughout the year as well. Look, you, you touched on this, and I want to explore further what you're just saying. But in terms of that cooling off but still and it'll bounce around where does the agency have the competitive edge over other real estate companies Nick, yes you've mentioned you've got you've got the hubs and there's that direct communication and dialogue between the agents and the executive and obviously then the the agents and with the customers so but being a nationally listed company how is that a winner for you guys so we're relatively young. You know, we've been uh, we've been in business just short of five years, and it is a new and contemporary business model. Now, important there is agents being attracted to that business model. Now, also in our investor deck that we published on the ASX, you'll see very strong growth in agent numbers. You know, we're growing at circa thirty percent per annum in terms of agent numbers. So there are agents that are predominantly already operating in, under, in other businesses, other brands in the respective communities who are seeing the value of our model and coming and joining us. So that's an example of very strong organic growth. And that is growth above system growth that you talked about before. Okay. So we've been successful in attracting, you know, we'll probably put on somewhere net between 80 and 90, perhaps even 100 agents in this current financial year off a base of about 308 at the beginning of the financial year. So that's a strong driver of growth. Why are they attracted? Um, they're attracted with the model because, as I mentioned before, we don't have that other ownership group between us and the agent and therefore a financial leakage. And we also don't, I was going to say waste, invest capital in bricks and mortar real estate offices. And so we're more efficient with our capital. And as a result of that, we're able to offer higher splits to the agents. Financially, it's more attractive for them. So, but when the market's not booming like it has been for the last 12 to 18 months, it must be a bit more challenging to, uh, you know, to, to, to break on the bottom line. Yes, you would think that when it gets more challenging for real estate agents. So if you take your mind to the last 12 months, it's been a terrific market to be a real estate agent in. And I guess the game there and the competition there has been for agents winning listings. And so competing for that business to get the listing and they're pretty much selling themselves the properties. When the market changes, and we're starting to see that happen certainly in the eastern seaboard and believe that will follow to the west, when that happens, it's more difficult for agents. Thinking about the predominant business model, they have franchise owners who are also agents who are employing those agents, and so they're competing with each other. When stock is tighter, those agents will be more competitive, and so they'll get probably a little bit frustrated with those operating models. When, when it's a tougher marketplace, they look to go somewhere else, and that's where our business is attractive. So we believe a tightening market or a more challenged market for real estate agents is a very good thing for our organic growth. Right now, where is your um, where's where are your most agents uh, coming from? Uh, where are they located geographically? No, which sorry, which state or which territory boasts the most number of agents right now? Uh, so New South Wales, slightly ahead of WA. Um, pleasingly, our growth in WA is very very strong. 
Um, so New South Wales slightly ahead of WA, and then we then dropped back to a relatively new business in Queensland. We have about 20 agents in Queensland growing very quickly. We have about 24 agents down in Victoria, and that's a market that will see great growth. And we've also just started in the ACT in Canberra. There's a very, very big demand there for new apartment buildings. So we have a strong project marketing biz business there. We currently have eight agents in that marketplace. Other markets that we're looking to go to, um, Tasmania shortly, and obviously South Australia is a market that's very interesting to us as well. This week, Western Australia rejoins the rest of the nation and opens its borders to the world. There's literally uh, around 30,000 people that have booked flights to come to WA over the next week or two. Many of them won't have a house. Many of them will be relying on living with family and relatives in the interim and short term. There isn't a great deal of stock and supply uh, here in Western Australia. And if there is, it's at a, what you'd say a, uh, an inflated price. So what does that mean for your agents uh, and the market in general? Because WA is obviously uh, a bit of a different beast right now, considering it's opening the floodgates. Now, there is going to be an expected, an expected rush over the next six months uh, for you know, demand, uh, and you don't have that supply. So what, how, does that, how does that affect the market? And what could that mean effectively for your bottom line? Yeah, and so WA, um, it's interesting. You will see um, a net movement of people back toward WA. Um, what you have seen, of course, in recent weeks and months is a number of corporates saying it's too difficult to operate, and so you're seeing movement the other way. Mm. Notwithstanding that, more demand, restricted stock, upward pressure on price, particularly investment. So there's strong investment fundamentals for residential real estate in WA, probably not terrific news for first home buyers, but a reasonably robust market going forward. And that's a healthy thing for our business over there as well. Now, when it comes to recruiting new agents, there's a time lag, Jeff, before they start being productive, before they start bringing or contributing uh, to the bottom line, about six mm. months. Uh, is my understanding. So are you trying to get them to contribute quicker? And if so, what would that mean for your overall bottom line in the long run? Yeah, and so again, in our investor deck uh, that we lodged, you can see a graphical representation of what happens when we recruit uh, an agent or a group of agents into the business. And there is that, that income lag. If we find that if we're recruiting into a market where the brand is already in existence, then they take about three to four months to start contributing in any material way to our operating profit. But if we're going into a new market and say, for example, like I mentioned before, Tasmania or South Australia, and we recruit them in, it could take six months or so, plus or minus a month to start contributing. So I guess their agent growth in existing markets will start to contribute more rapidly than agent growth in new markets. That's not to say that we bias toward uh, existing markets, but that's just the way that it works. Now, our training and development uh, is important and the way that we distribute that training to new agents, that's a method where we can accelerate the productivity of the agents and then starting to make them more productive earlier. But when you start to get you know, meaningful numbers like 100 net coming in, um, it's difficult to shorten that period of time. So you'll see that the 57 or 60 odd that we've recruited in this financial year so far, we see them starting to uh, progressively contribute to profit in the back end of this financial year. Probably not too much meaningfully this year, but then there's strength next year. Okay. So what, uh, what lies on the horizon then for the agency leading into... Uh, the end of this financial year into June 30? Um, so we don't, we don't issue forecasts. It's a very difficult thing to, uh, to issue. We do talk about what we see in the marketplace. I've told you about prices. We think volumes of transactions will probably approximate what the country did in the 2001 year will probably be met in calendar 2000 sorry, 2021, will probably be met in 2022. Um, we'll see 
that volumes will reduce in coming periods toward Easter and then, of course, the federal election. So late April, early May volumes will drop off. Following that, we see an acceleration. I was about to say new government. <laughs> Confirmation of a government post-election, um, we'll see confidence returning and activity returning. So net, net, we see relatively strong volumes, probably approximating what happened in 2021. Okay. Well, well it, it uh, remains to be seen how prophetic you will be indeed, Jeff, <laughs> in terms of a new Always government. happy to be scored afterwards, after our, uh, after our forward views. So we are looking forward to the balance of the year. I mean, there's a lot happening. There's a number of influences in the marketplace. It makes it interesting. Importantly, it gives our agents the opportunity to offer value to their prospective clients. When things are changing, when it's a stagnant market, there's not a lot of value to demonstrate that you're offering. And so in our training and development for the agents, we make sure that we're equipping them with that information so they can continually add value to their customers, which gives us more market share and makes them more successful. Jeff, we'll, we'll leave it there for today. It's definitely going to be a, uh, a, an interesting market uh, for the next uh, few months indeed to till the end of the financial year at least. And you're right, the, uh, with the federal election uh, just around the corner, I think there's a lot of uh, balls in the air. But uh, over here on the West Coast, uh, things are still flying. And I know this, it's still quite active on the eastern seaboard, even though there is some cooling off effect in New South Wales. It's great to have your company. Thanks for spending time here on the Small Caps podcast and sharing the agency's uh, insights today. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're looking forward to visiting Western Australia in the coming weeks. We look forward to it as well. We'll chat to you then. Good, very good. Thanks, Peter.